Hi, welcome to Senior Savvy. I'm Jane Wells, your host for today's show. Senior Savvy is brought to you by the Oshkosh Senior Center, where it's our mission to enrich the quality of life for adults ages 50 and older. And a little bit later in today's show, um, I'm going to have a guest on named Tony. And Tony is our intern at the Senior Center, and he works with our fitness program. And so we're going to have fitness tips from Tony, so stay tuned for that. But you know, spring is in the air. Sometimes people start thinking about projects they might want to be doing around the home. But what happens if for some reason you can't do those projects around your home? Well, my guest today is Steve Kaiser, and Steve is from home. And we're going to learn all about this fabulous program. So welcome, Steve. Hi, Jane. How are you today? I'm doing great, thanks. Great. All right, so you know, I always kind of grill people just a little bit. So tell us a little bit about you personally, and then we're going to get into home and your role in that and things like that. OK, I am uh, married. My wife's name is Becky. I have a daughter. Uh, her name is Jamie. I have a uh, grandson. His name is Gavin. Oh, fun. Um, I worked at the police department for approximately 29 years uh, after um, working at the police department. Uh, my mother and my uh, stepfather were, were sick and going through some different things. Mm -hmm. So I retired a little bit early than I was originally planning on. Helped take care of them for a while. Um, after that, I began volunteering at Habitat for Humanity for mm -hmm. a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And it was actually your involvement with Habitat that kind of has led to all of this. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. That and plus the time that I spent at the police department saw some of the sure. issues uh, while I was at the police department. Mm -hmm. So really what we're going to talk about today is a program that you have kind of built and or are developing and it's to help people stay in their homes. Correct. All right. Uh, ho home itself stands for helping owners maintain equity. Helping owners maintain mm -hmm. equity. Correct. Which basically means keeping it in a good state of repair. Correct. All right, wonderful. So, um, what's so what? What's the mission, <laughs> mission and vision of home? Uh, the mission or the vision of home is uh, a community where low-income people can maintain their homes and enjoy a better quality of life. Mm -hmm. And our mission is uh, by providing home maintenance services. Home will help improve the safety, security, weather efficiency, and quality of life and health for low-income homeowners and the community. Very cool. And um, so how did this come to be? How, you know, you said a little bit from your experience, you know, with the PD and the homes that you had gone into and things like that. So how did the whole, how did you start? Well, when I was at uh, Habitat, uh, Habitat has a program um, called Neighborhood Revitalization Initiative and they assist homeowners with repairs to their homes. Mm -hmm. um, there are also other agencies within the city that assist homeowners um, with repairs to their home. However, one of the groups of people that were not being assisted were the, were the lower income people. Okay. So basically, um, places like Habitat help to 30 to 80 percent mm -hmm. um, of the median income and which is what most of the other agencies assist with. Okay. So what we did is there's a lot of homeowners out there that are below the 30% of the median income level. All right. um, so we decided to focus on that particular group of people. Um, what happened was after I left Habitat, I sat down with uh, numerous agencies throughout the city and we discussed if there was an actual need for that particular mm -hmm. service. Um, some of the other people that we were originally around the table with, we, we discussed whether we should try to raise funds or whether we should um, determine if there's an issue first. So we didn't want to raise funds before we determined if right. there was an issue. Right. So after sitting down with several different agencies and, the, and it was determined that there was a need, um, we decided to uh, try to raise some funds and then just kind of slowly work in the process. Because even though there's uh, um, agencies determine there's a, there's a need for it, we didn't know if there was going to be a want for it. Right, <clears throat> right. Um, Even though everybody said there was a need, we could have found out later that even though there, there was that particular need for the service, that people just didn't feel like calling for whatever reason or didn't, right. or didn't want to utilize the service. Well, and I think it's really important mm -hmm to just note that, it, I mean, you had this idea or you kind of had a sense that there was this need, 
but then you also involved a whole lot of other community partners to correct, also correct. Um, make a true assessment of the situation to really determine that yes, indeed, there is a need for this. Yes. And so, it, um, and then from there, that's how it all really got rolling, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty much, I mean, we sat down with um, ADRC, which is the Aging and Disabilities Resource mm -hmm. Center, uh, Habitat, Advocap, Senior Center, uh, we also had people from the city planning and the city ins inspector's office. Um, we had a lady from the Winnebago County, uh, Winnebago County supervisor there. Mm -hmm. um, we also spoke to people from um, the Esther program. And after that, after that determination was made that there was that there was a need, um, we did we did need to raise some funding. Right. Right. So we had several meetings with people, and what we what we determined was there was not a, a need for the entire group to sit down on a monthly basis. Sure. So we kind of broke into like a smaller group. Mm -hmm. So there was myself, there was um, Cindy Pischke from Aging and Disabilities Resource Center, there was Dory Wilner from Habitat for Humanity, and there was uh, Jennifer Neer who uh, works in the private sector. Okay. Um, Dory knew that there was a contest coming up which was last April through the university creating a stronger community mm -hmm. contest. So we entered the contest, um, ended up taking first at the contest. So that was kind of the, our initial seed money. Okay. We yeah. got about $1,500 um, from that contest. And then basically what we did is we got the word out to all the people that we sat down with that we were gonna start some small projects. Mm -hmm. and, and people started, those agencies started referring okay. um, people to us. Okay, and so um, I know that um, we have talked about, you know, handling the financial end of it and how does all that work? And you actually then were able to kind of find a, a, a house or an umbrella to be under, correct? correct. Um, I knew I knew Mike Mike Bober, um, who was the pastor at Emmaus Church. When I was with Habitat, I met him. Mm -hmm. So we called him. Um, <coughs> they are the nonprofit that we are under their umbrella, and they have an individual that they use. His name is Dave Hayford, mm -hmm. um, who is their accountant. So sure. we, we're under their umbrella basically for um the nonprofit status mm -hmm. and also if there are fisc there are they are they are our fiscal agent right i guess what it you know by our discussion with this really i just wanted to establish the credibility of right. home because you know you are going into people's homes and right. doing work for them and so this isn't a fly-by-night thing by any means and so Let's talk a little bit more about the program. So you go, I have something that's in a state of disrepair, and then what? Um, who qualifies, or what? what's the criteria for who can be, uh, take advantage of the services that you guys offer, and? Um, we, the, the main thing is you need to be a homeowner, um, mm -hmm. and you need to be a low-income homeowner. So roughly speaking, if you're a single person and you make $15,000 a year or less, um, basically all you need to do is call us. Mm -hmm. We have a, or go on to our website. You can also contact us through our website. And I guess we'll get into that sure. with that a little bit later. Um, and then what happens is if you call me directly, I'll kind of go over the phone with you a little bit and decide if you if you do actually qualify. Mm -hmm. We set up a, an appointment with you, usually within a couple of days or whenever you're available. And then I come over to your residence, I make an assessment of what work needs to be done. And there's a short um, application that needs to be filled out, so mm -hmm. we fill out a short application. And then um, after that, it's just a matter of getting the work, getting sure. the work completed. I know at the Senior Center we field a lot of calls for seniors in particular looking for help. Um, so this is fantastic to have something to kind of refer them to or at least suggest that they come and check you out a little bit. Um, so are there any exceptions to the, to the low income? What if I had, you know, medical bills or a specific situation? Um, do the, you the, the monetary guidelines are, are just kind of a base that we uh, okay. that we start from. So if say you're making say you're single and you're making 
twenty thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. um, and you have some money in the bank, we'll sit down with you. And if you have if you have some outstanding debt, right. if you still carry a mortgage, if you have outstanding medical bills, um, or if you have any other large debt um, that sure. that needs to be considered, right. we take that all into account um, mm -hmm. prior to our making a decision. We've actually, out of all the people that have called us so far, we've only actually turned down one person. Okay. Um, and that was simply because their income was, was quite a bit more than, right. than uh, we allowed. So does the, res does the homeowner have any responsibilities in terms of the financial aspect of it when you come in to, to do a repair? <clears throat> well, what we ask the homeowner to do is, aside from uh, fi taking some time to fill out the application, is if there's any way that they can assist us mm -hmm. or if they have any friends or relatives that sure. can come over and assist us, uh, we appreciate that. Um, we also ask that if they can afford to pay for the materials okay. or a portion of the materials mm -hmm. that they do that. Not even necessarily mm -hmm. that they need to go out and buy them, but correct? Correct. Or that, you, correct. you know, you have a yes. list and you can say it's going to be X number of dollars. Can you help to cover that? Yes. What, what I do is I, 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 I'm the one that goes to the store generally and picks the mm -hmm. stuff out. I have had people come along with me and go to the store. They pick out the stuff. Um, if they can pay for it, they pay for it. If they can't, we pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, if I go to the store and pick the stuff up, I bring the receipts back to them. Sure. Show them the receipts. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if they can pay for some of it, then they pay for some of it. And, some of it, and if they can't, they can't. Right. We also kind of base our labor rate on, a, on $25 an hour. Mm -hmm. So if they can afford to pay some or part of that, right. um, they also, we ask that they do that. If they can't afford to pay for anything, then we just do the work and they don't pay us anything. All the, all the money, whether it, be, whether it is from the um, money that the people pay us for the material or whether it's the money the people pay us for the labor, 100% of that goes back into the program. Mm -hmm. um, so what I do then is I take all the receipts and I send all the, I send everything to, to Dave Hayford and then he takes care of everything. Sure. That includes any, any money that we get for any type of labor, at least okay. for our volunteer labor. Sure, so let's talk, uh, we have about five minutes left, so let's talk a little bit about um, the type of work that you do or you know what types of things could I call you about to have you come and fix. Um, I know you and I have talked and you shared some of the things that you've done for people. Yeah, I had, a, if we only got five minutes left, I'm, I'm not going to go through all of these, but we, our, our, our short-term goal was for the first year we wanted to do maybe one or two projects a month. <laughs> um, after four months, we've already exceeded that, so we've right. already exceeded our short-term goal. Um, examples are cleaning gutters, um, a lady that we, uh, and all the, all the people that we've dealt with so far are elderly, mm -hmm. are mostly elderly, low income, and generally speaking, single sure. people that, that are single people. So we've cleaned gutters, we've trimmed back uh, tree branches that were on people's roofs and kind of scraping away mm -hmm. their, their shingles. Um, Things that they just physically cannot do. Correct, correct. Um, we prefer staying with, with um, ranch type homes mm -hmm. as opposed to going up two or three stories. Um, we had a lady that a friend had walked out of her apartment and stepped through their porch, went through the, mm. went through the, went through the porch. So we resurfaced the porch for her. Um, there was another lady that couldn't get her furnace started, so we went over and started her furnace for, her and also also showed her how to start it. So sure. if we went out again, Great. she could do it herself. Right. Um, yeah. So is there any, so so basically, I mean, you're not looking to go in and knock out walls and redo a whole room or something like that. No. Um, kind of the smaller basic upkeep of a place Correct. to maintain that equity. So very specific things that you just cannot do? Um, anything that requires a license, okay. uh, such as plumbing and electrical sure. work, mm -hmm. we cannot do any of that. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much what we're limited to where we limit ourselves. Right. Um, I'm not a licensed plumber. I'm not a licensed electrician. We don't have anybody like that on staff. So right, right. We don't do any of that. Right. So if somebody was interested, I know you get a lot of referrals from agencies, but if somebody's watching and they would like to know if, if they could have you come or, or if they'd be a candidate, how do they contact you? Or what's the, the best way to get involved? 
Uh, the easiest you. way is just to call me at 920-658-3024. Um, uh, if you want to know a little bit more about the program, you can go to www.helphomeoshkosh.com. Um, we do have a website for that. And um, either way, you can contact me. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it, it's easiest if you call, call sure. the phone number. Though. And we're just going to give that number again, 920 658 3024. Correct. And that's actually your personal cell phone, isn't it? That's my personal cell phone. So yes. they will get you when they phone that number. Yes. And if they end up having to leave a message, I know when I left messages, you got back right away. So. Yeah, if I don't um, answer, just leave a message and I'll get back to you right away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so for contacting you, the, it's best a phone call, but they can check out the website. Um, what about um, if this strikes a chord with me? And I would like to donate some money to your cause. What do I do, or how can I do that? How yes, <laughs> you can. You can do that. And again, you would have to go to the website, and it's either through PayPal, or you can send a check to um, Emmaus Church, and it's on the website. I right. And I think it's up on the screen right now yeah. too. So yeah, it's, it's PO, mm -hmm. PO Box four twenty two um, five four nine zero two, and it's attention Dave Hayford. Right. You would make the check out to Emmaus, and then in the uh, memo portion of the check, put home. That way, when it goes to, uh, e to, the, to Emmaus, that they know that it's for, for home. Right. So if I want to donate, I can go to the website and check out the address for Emmaus Church, send it to Emmaus Church, put um, home in the memo line so they know where to direct the funds. Correct. If I want to find out about the program and if what I have is a need you could fill, then I'm just going to call your cell phone directly is probably the best way. That would be the best way, sure. yes. And you do have email as well, right? Yes. So, um, so they could contact you via email, but cell phone is yes. best. Wonderful. Well, hats off to you. Um, I can only see this growing, and as more and more people find out about it, um, what a great endeavor for you to take on. Well, I appreciate that, and we really appreciate you letting us come on the show. Oh, too, like I said, we have a lot of seniors who call and have the need for something like this. It's just stuff they can't physically do on their own anymore um, or don't have the tools anymore. So um, thank you for, yeah, no, for that, no, being willing to take on this need, though, <laughs> but it's, it's well, huge. And we all want people to be able to stay in their homes longer and age kind of where they are. Yes. And this is a critical, critical step to making that happen. Oh, definitely. Well, plus some of the weather stripping we do, some of the, I'm going over mm -hmm. to a lady's house after here and changing the locks on her home because she, she's got some issues with her, with her locks and she doesn't feel secure. So sure. there's also security issues, weatherization issues. You can bring the, yeah. you know, your heat bills down a little bit. And right, exactly, so. exactly. Great, great project. I wish you the best of luck with it. And Thank you. Um, I'm sure that you're going to continue to have services that are needed. Oh, yes, yes, I know we are. <laughs> thank you, Steve. Okay, thank you. All right. So I promised you Tony the intern and tips from Tony. So we are going to feature those next. Here are your first fitness tips from Tony. And as promised, I have with me Tony the intern. Hi, Tony. Hi. <laughs> All right, why don't you introduce yourself for us, please? All right. Um, yes, my name is Tony Framke. I'm an intern from the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. Uh, my major is kinesiology, and I have an emphasis in strength and conditioning. And, real quick, what is kinesiology? Uh, kinesiology <laughs> is the study of the body's movement um, and the way it just kind of it works. Okay. And you're going to talk to us today about da 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 da. Exercise, fitness yes. tips, uh, that type okay. of thing. Okay, take it um, away, Tony. So it's never too late to become active. You know, physical activity it mm -hmm. does provide benefits for all ages. Right. Um, big thing with the senior population, you know, preventing things, um, enhancing the quality of life, and just maintaining the ability to perform everyday tasks. Right. You know? And that is so crucial. <laughs> if we want people to be able to stay in their home, they have to be able to do things. Yes. Um, yes. Other than sit in the recliner all day. Right. <laughs> all you know, right. as much as that sounds great, <laughs> exactly. Like, we need to get up. Right. So, what around. kind of what what exactly do you mean by exercise? What what are you talking? Right. So, I'm talking about you know cardiovascular exercise and strength Which means training. Gets the heart pumping. Yes, that will mm -hmm. get the heart going, um, heart rate up. You know, blood pumping, nice mm -hmm. and warm. And strength training is building muscle mass or maintaining muscle mass. Okay. Um, and so, you know, as we age, <laughs> oftentimes we 
find that we're looking at diabetes <laughs> or um, elevated cholesterol or elevated blood pressure. And a lot of these things um, can be somewhat controlled or maintained through becoming physically yes, active. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, for example, cardiovascular exercise, it has been shown to slightly reduce um, a high blood pressure over okay. time. Yep. You know, just an example mm -hmm. of one of the awesome benefits of exercise. Right. All right. So do your big disclaimer here. All Take right. Um, just <laughs> before starting any exercise, please remember to consult your healthcare provider. Um, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. We want to make sure that you are safe. The exercises are safe for you. Mm -hmm. And just make sure to ask questions about pre-existing medical conditions. You know, safety is key. Right. So talk to the doctor, get his <coughs> o his or her okay. Yes. And then get started. All yes. right. So then here's the million dollar question. How mm -hmm. much exercise is enough <laughs> exercise? That question, the answer to that is, you know, it's totally going to depend on you and your current fitness level. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are just starting out, you know, you want to stick with, you know, five to 10 minutes of sure. exercise. Right. Don't stress yourself too much. Right. The body has We're to We're talking walking up and down your driveway. Yeah. If you aren't oh, doing yeah. anything, mm -hmm. get up out of the chair, walk up and down your driveway. Right, right. You know, that, just that, you know, mm -hmm. is awesome for your body. You know, just getting outside, I mean, even if it's inside, you know, marching yep. in place, something right. like that. You right, know. exactly. Um, <clears throat> so you had mentioned something about strength training. So what, what, what exactly is strength training? What does that mean? Strength training, um, it basically is, you know, tearing down muscle fibers, you know, very microscopic, and then the body will heal itself and slowly build that muscle a little bit bigger. And over time, you know, if you're, if you're really diligent in your strength training program, you will build, slowly build muscle. You know, if your goal mm -hmm. is only to maintain it, and you do exercises to maintain the muscle mass, then you will just maintain the okay. muscle mass. So I'm actually tearing my muscle <coughs> And then the body repairs it, and that's how I build the muscle. Yes, yes. It sounds kind of crazy, but it does. It, it's, it's fascinating. It's amazing. Yep. yep. Right. And um, so lots of time when people first get into exercise and things like that, they go crazy. And, you know, they're like, give it, give it, give it every day. And then, yes. oh, man, my and back. And you, <laughs> you know, you hurt yourself. Right, exactly. Yeah. So give us some tips along that line. Right. Okay. So you really want to set a goal for yourself. Don't stress yourself out too much. Um, right. According to the CDC, you want to um, a, a good goal would be getting 150 minutes of um, cardiovascular exercise. Uh, you know that's only two hours in a and month 30 minutes or? in a week. In a week. <laughs> okay. Um, so you know, if you're just starting out, that's probably not going to happen. You know, that's right. that's a lot of exercise. So right. let's say you go for maybe 15 minutes a day. Right. That would be, or you know, five to ten, you know, right, even exactly. fifteen minutes. You know, mm -hmm. just start out small and slowly work your way bigger. Right. And do I give her every single day, or what's kind of the best way to approach that? The best way would to give your your body at least you know twenty four hours of a good rest period before performing another session of cardiovascular training or strength training. Right. Because <laughs> you you actually do. I mean, obviously, if you're strength training and you're you know trying to build that muscle, mm -hmm. you have to give your body time to repair. Yes, it, it needs to heal. Right. That doesn't, so so would you do cardiovascular one day and strength training the next? Would that be okay? Is yeah, that, or? Um, a pretty simple, you know, workout plan would be uh, cardiovascular training Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay. Um, and then, you know, mixing in strength training on Tuesday and Thursday. Okay. That would be, you know. Saturday, Sunday off, doesn't Saturday, mean go Sunday to the off. buffet. Right, but. right, but, you know, <laughs> right. don't be afraid to splurge a little bit, you know. Right, exactly. Um, and that's actually, I mean, that's a really basic, easy workout plan, yes. what you just suggested. Yeah. yeah. Very basic, you know, very easy. Right. Anyone can do it. Right. And again, you start out small if you need to start out, mm -hmm. um, whether it's just getting up out of the chair and, um, you know, or parking your car three stalls away from the door instead yeah. of right on top of the oh, door. Oh, yeah. You know, if you're going grocery shopping, try parking, you know, right. towards the back of the lot. And then yep. that's a good way to get right. extra exercise in. Yep. And, you know, as somebody who wasn't fit and now I am more fit, I'm not where I, anyway, <laughs> it is one little step at a time. Yes. It's one decision yep. at a time to take the stairs instead of the elevator right. and all that other stuff. Right. Well, Tony, thank you so much for coming you're on welcome. and doing tips you're from welcome. Tony. <laughs> and we're going to look forward to some more and maybe yes, even definitely. like a little demonstration of some exercises okay. and things like that yeah. that people can do. I think we can do that. That would be yeah. wonderful. Great. Well, thank, thank you again, Tony. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, and yeah, uh, you can check out Tony at the Ashcash Senior Center because you're leading all kinds of classes. Yes, you? yes. Butts and guts. Uh, that's what I'm leading right now. And it's been a hit so far. Excellent. Yeah, you have you have quite a following, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> All right. Awesome. 
So Tony's classes aren't the only things that are happening at the Oshkosh Senior Center. Um, we also have other events that are upcoming and I'm going to share those with you. So here's what's happening at the Oshkosh Senior Center. Photo Sharing 101, Friday, March 20th, 10 a.m. Come on down and listen to Chris Kniep from um, UW Extension, Winnebago County, talk about how to, where to all share your photos, what to all do with them, and things like that. In this digital age, um, it is best to kind of know what's, what's, what's okay to put out there, what's not okay, and Chris is going to help us learn that. Golden Tones, our fabulous concert through the Oshkosh Senior Center, directed by Paula Steinert, is seeking basses and tenors to sing with a hardworking and fun and friendly group. Um, rehearsals are on Mondays at 1.30 at the Oshkosh Senior Center, and then the chorus does go out into the community and do outreach, and they perform um, at a variety of organizations and clubs and events. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a family, it really is. So if you um, are interested in singing and joining the chorus, come on down. Saturday, March 28th, Breakfast with the Bunny at the Oshkosh Senior Center. Um, come on down for pancakes and sausage patties, or sausages, 8 to 10, uh, excuse me, 8 to 11 o'clock a.m. Adults are $5, children are $3, uh, one and under is free. Where else can you get a big breakfast for five bucks? Um, come on down and have pancakes with us and then go over to the zoo and join it for exciting day at the zoo. You can buy your tickets um, at the Senior Center or at Festival Foods. The clock is ticking, do you feel it? Tax time is coming, or tax time is here, and the deadline is fast approaching. Um, the Oshkosh Senior Center is still hosting the tax assistance appointments now through April. Thursdays and Fridays, 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Um, tax assistance program provides help to low and middle income taxpayers and individuals over the age of 60. Volunteer counselors are there to help you out. Appointments are required, and you'll need to call 920 six five one three zero six zero to make that appointment don't come unless you have an appointment um, but so make your appointment and then you can come on down to the senior center and we'll see you there for tax aid all right mark wednesday april 1st no fooling 130 tuba dan is going to be at the oshkosh senior center but not just tuba dan tuba dan and the polka dots <laughs> um, the polka dots are seventh and eighth grade span students who uh, work during their lunch hour on this kind of music, and they are going to be joining us with Tuba Dan. So come on down for a great afternoon, and we'll have some cookies and punch afterwards. Advocap Meal Site is at the Oshkosh Senior Center. Come on down and have lunch on us Monday through Fridays at 11.30 a.m. You do need to call Advocap the day before to reserve your spot, and the number is 920-2725-2791. Two seven nine one. So call the day ahead to reserve your spot at the meal site. That's it for all the things that are coming up at the Oshkosh Senior Center. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Senior Savvy. Get out there and enjoy the day. Thanks.